And also, like, if it's local honey, it might have been made in a tire. Hey, it's me. So, um, realized halfway through recording with Masami that, um, <laughs> I did not have my own audio recording the entire time because I am a very smart person and I've done this a thousand times and somehow still make dumbass mistakes. Anyway, so I'm just going to be here filling in what I had initially said fucking, you know, hours ago. The first category is horror and I have five movies in it. St. Maud, Fear Street 1666, Malignant, Candyman, and uh, Last Night in Soho. Now, as I've said in my review, St. Maud has a lot of, like, um, religious trauma to it. it. It it deals with a lot of, you know, mental illness and everything. Oh, so biography. And it, it's, it's a very interesting movie you know, uh, to watch because just to kind of, like, watch someone just kind of lose their shit. You know what I mean? And it's not like the usual horror, you know, most of the time if I like it's like, you know, something in horror, it's not the blah 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 kind of stuff. You know, there, there's more to it than just that. Um, yeah, so St. Maud. The second one is Fear Street 1666. Now, I really liked the other two Fear Street ones, but this one was like my favorite one, being that it was the last one of the trilogy and where everything wrapped up you know, and included and, you know, everything kind of, oh, this is what makes sense at the end here. And as I've explained in my review, uh, Fear Street is teen horror, so you kind of don't expect it to, you know, it's like, oh, that's, that's shit that I would have dealt with as a teenager. As an adult, whatever, you know, like, I've got student loans and a mortgage and all that stuff. Who cares about mm, Billy on, you know, on the football team kind of shit. But, yeah, it's like how Goosebumps is kids horror, you know? After that is Malignant. I talked about how much I fucking love this movie. Of course, how much that, you know, they were able to, to take a big budget and let James Wan just kind of do whatever the fuck he wants, uh, what he wanted to do. Uh, I, I had explained that, you know, this movie is ridiculous. In my review, I talked very long about how it's very dumb, but I loved it, so fuck it. It's on my top list, you know. Oh, this is this thing that everyone on the internet was going like, what did I just watch? I, I, I kept hearing about it. Well, that was the only review I got. I didn't hear anything about the plot. It was just like people looking down. You know how people like look down at the corner. They're not looking up at the screen and they're just like, yes. Exactly. <laughs> so so that was most of the reviews I got. And I'm just like, should, should I? I explained to Masami, as I had said in my review, that it's like those shitty horror low budget movies that I, you know, that I talk about all the time. But if you're given oh, actually a good director, good actor, a budget, a good like studio, you know, not indie, and you're just allowed to just wreak havoc, and that's what he did. And James Wan definitely had fun making it. I is this what? No, because Neil Breen, I don't think he could do this if he had money. Because it would still be him as the lead role. Like, everyone else could be flawless. Like, he could get a stellar cast. And then it would just... But they get real guns. And then that's the diff... Oh, that's a bad idea. He should not get money. Never mind. Please excuse it. How, how, I mean, it's great that they had that, that money. I just remember what I, or I just would love to know, not remember, but I just would love to know what the conversation was when he was handed the script and he's just like, okay, I guess I'll give 120% to this. Get me the best actors, actors and actresses who will also give 120% to this and not question what they're doing this Saturday. I think we should put together a movie like that. Just have the worst story or like enough of a story to make it through, but it's just done well somehow. 
Yes. Like the terrible rom-coms we come up with where everyone just ends up sad. <laughs> well, then it's Candyman, and Masami said that she did watch the movie. I did watch the new Candyman. I have not watched the originals. I think it would have helped me a lot if I had. But yo, that stop motion animation that they showed at the end, like the puppetry, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yo, even when he just like, this this is in the very beginning, so it's not spoiling, and you obviously know it, but when he gets that big old bite and it just like starts to grow as someone who like, you know, I didn't always have insurance growing up, so it was just like, yeah, so um, if it was just like, oh, if I would see something like, and guess who also has a ton of allergies, so occasionally something on me would just like kind of not be working right, skin-wise, not like disability, thankfully, but. <laughs> we have the diff same coin, different sides, but any, but yeah, um. So seeing just that kind of grow and like shift all the way down his body, I don't, I didn't know the lore really of Candyman, but just seeing that go down just like made me very nervous. Yeah, we talked about the special effects in it. My, you know, again, what I've said in my uh, my love of uh, the use of mirrors, the you know the acting in it, that stuff, the the lore of Candyman, shit. Yeah, Candyman. <laughs> Uh, then last on the list is Last Night in Soho. I pretty much was gushing about how much I just love Edgar Wright for a while. <laughs> and then, you know, kind of joking, jokingly talked about how, you know, the story is just like a, you've heard the story before kind of thing. I'm from a small town. I moved to the city. Again, as I've said this previously in my review. Um, and then I kind of shitted on some, you know, art house, uh, you know, um, like movie fans who were like this movie's insufferable kind of stuff because they always have to be upset about something. You know? Um, the second category is sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, sci-fi fantasy, and we have Dune and the Green Knight. Um, so with Dune, we had a very long conversation, which would have been edited down anyway. Um, about Dune and what it's all about and everything. I spoke about again, as I said before. In my review about how I had watched the old Dune and watched the new one, um, she hadn't watched it. She, um, Masami doesn't really know much about the Dune world and all that stuff. But you know, uh, we both agreed that it was kind of funny how people didn't understand why you know, uh, the, like people were upset that this was only a part one kind of thing, Not understanding that um, a book this thick, you know, could be, somehow be a very short film. Stop after like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like it's been a few years. Trilogies are a thing now, or at least sequels. People don't get that. I remember being in the movie theater like as a child, and you're like as like Frodo and Sam are like looking at Mordor, and then it, you know goes to credits, and people are like, "That's it." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was just like, even as a child, I had knew I had I knew the story decently because my parents are giant nerds and i just wanted to look at those adults that i just thought were stupid people and just say like of of course not that's not how stories work by the way i'm in middle school like i did <laughs> well also this is like every marvel movie like and now i'm just thinking like of everything that has sequels and everyone's just like totally fine with that you're mad that you bought a ticket for something that obviously is a didn't they even say like before going in it's part one like no one was lying about that they didn't say it was like a well they didn't say this is like a 15 minute romp and it's just i'm sorry completely derailing everything it's just no, you're okay. I just realized I was not recording my own audio. You want to meet again? I'm so upset. I'm so I'm halfway through the list. I am so 
stop your talking. And then I was just double checking, like, the because you're talking. I'm like, oh, let me check on, like, your audio levels. And I, I'm like, oh, maybe in case it's too loud. And I looked at my mic part, and I'm going, mm-hmm. And I don't see it light up, and I'm like. And I click on it, and I'm like. I was like, oh, my God. I was like. It wasn't set on my mic this whole time. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm hitting record again. Let's hope this. I can't believe it. There's sound now. I can see it. I can see the bar going. I can see the bar. There's. I can't believe. We talked for like how long was that other one? We talked for like an hour. Like, yeah, an hour and a half of recording. An hour and a half of recording. <laughs> none, of, none of my fucking words were recorded, but your words were recorded. I could, I could fix this. I could, I could fix this. Just like slapping band aids. I could fix it. I could fix it. Anyway, so I was gonna say edit it like you know, oh, like the Trixie and Katya <laughs> show, and I'm just like that editing takes forever. It takes forever. Like it's a lot, and it's After Effects, and I don't know After. Jesus Christ. So we had just talked about Dune before I realized no audio on my end was recorded because <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyway. So the next movie, I just feel so, because like we were talking for so long and to go back to this is like, really, bitch? Anyway, so, um, so the second one in the sci-fi fantasy thing is The Green Knight, which is the highest rated movie I have on my list for this year. I have it at 4.5 stars. Everything else here is like, actually, no, I do have a couple more. I'm lying. Sorry about that. I just realized I'm lying. Uh, but in this category, let's just say. 4.5 stars. Did you, okay, so you said you didn't watch The Green Knight. Do you at least know the story about Sir Gawain and The Green Knight? Did you have to read that in high school? No, I went to a very shitty high school. I mean, I did too, but damn. They at least shoved Beowulf and shit down our throats, but... I'm gonna have to read Beowulf? I don't want to talk. <laughs> okay, okay, okay! I'm just... I'll stop, I'll stop. Just that face you made, like... My God, no old school Anglo-Saxon writing, no. <laughs> okay, I know. <laughs> just, <laughs> just from that face, That's... it seems like the bitch didn't get shit. All right. Uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight is an old Anglo-Saxon story. Um, it's about Sir Gawain, who in this movie is played by Dev Patel, who was the only brown person in this movie. <laughs> Back in old times, the only brown man. Um, anyway, so he's there. He's challenged, you know, by the Green Knight to, like, chop his head off. And he's like, I got it. ka -ching! Chops the head off. And then the knight's head, like, he ends up, the knight ends up picking up his own head, putting it back on the shoulder and been like, I bet I'll see you in a year. Like, what? What? Wait, what? And the, 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 the story is about, like, his journey and finding the Green Knight again to, like, except the second challenge and all that other stuff. Cause he's like, Oh God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Cause that guy, I chopped his head off. And he just picked up his head. And was like, hoo -hoo, like, boop, you know, Lego style. And so, um, the, the, the movie is absolutely beautiful. It is shot so beautiful, like beautifully sets are amazing. Uh, locations are amazing. The acting was like, everything was so good in this movie costume. Oh my God. The costuming was so pretty so so pretty like so i'm just making all that noise um and like i know the, the story of sir going the green knight a lot besides learning it in high school but also tolkien did a translation of it as well so my ass is like ah, tolkien did it I never know him. you know <laughs> i read books mm -hmm. <laughs> look at this loser reads books <laughs> you know I, I wanted to be that loser that read books but i already told you my story <laughs> please continue who wanted the <laughs> we just like flip through you know corn husks all day <laughs> it's a great oh. book then you use it to one <laughs> okay, <I'll stop. laughs> anyway so like i said the the movie is just like his journey to go and all that stuff and it's done so well because it's obviously it's full like fantasy and all that shit and it 
gets like all kind of like gets gets kind of weird but like not too weird not like 70s <laughs> exploitation movie weird but it gets like you know the good weird and you're just you're just in this journey just watching dev patel be like the prettiest man also in the entire movie and then so much of the movies whenever someone encounters dev patel's character they love to just touch his face because it's like like okay that just looked weird but like someone would always be like oh like this they'll just like caress his cheek because he's so pretty you know they'd be okay. like you ooh, and you're, you're i'm just like i remember watching it being like everyone is just wanting a piece of that dev patel god damn you know fucking hell going from slumdog millionaire to just you know this holy shit i mean he obviously did movies in between that but like you know yeah <laughs> um but yeah it, it's this i would totally like a thousand percent recommend watching this movie just because it's just so pretty and it's just like okay. it's also like as as kind of I don't want to say goofy, but as like odd of, of like a story it is. It's like good. It's like are kind of odd. Like like come on, just just that alone of like someone crashes your party on horseback and it's like you can't kill me. And then some bitch is like I got it, chops the person's head off, and then they're like ka-ching, put my head back on. I'll see you in a year. You're like I don't want to fucking know what happens, you know. And then yeah, you watch. You know that oh god yeah and then like I said the the sets are so pretty I like that old like medieval architecture so I was like eh. I think they filmed in like actual castles too so it's not like like some parts were obviously sets well I mean not obvious you weren't like really <laughs> some parts were sets but some were like <laughs> there's a dude and, and jeans and <laughs> God anyway um but yes I would totally recommend this one um. So my next category, I call it IRL because it's based on like uh real life stuff or at least very um very relatable like like you you'll understand when I get to it. So I have four on the list. I have uh Minari uh Minari, Nomadland, Bo Burnham's Inside, and Judas and the Black Messiah. Um did you watch any of these? Um the Bo Burnham thing, yes, I did okay. watch that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down the list. So, uh, Minari is the is the Korean movie. I mean, it's American, yeah. but it's in Korean. It's the one with like Steven Yeun and all that stuff. And it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about a family who was like living in California because they're Korean. <laughs> you know, they're all, of course they're in California. Uh, they're in, uh, and then they moved to Arkansas. They moved to the South. They moved to the South. And the wife was like, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. The wife was like, why are we here? And the husband was like, well, we can, like, here for the money we spend living in California, we get a plot of land and da-da-da. This felt like my father. Like, it was just like, like, we could just invest in this crazy thing that doesn't make any sense. I'd be like, father, let's not do this. Stop, you know. And it's it's a lot of, you know, it's, it's the, the immigrant story kind of thing, you know. So it's very relatable, especially if your parents are just <laughs> like they're th that's how they are. And it's also just like they're Asian in the South. So it's like the immigrant story. Oh, look at the racism. Oh God, oh, Jesus. And then because it's an immigrant story, well, obviously with racism and it's in the South, of course there's gonna be some bad things happening in the movie that make you go, Okay, I don't wanna watch this anymore, but I'm gonna keep watching it because it's a really good movie. You know, it is it is really good, but it does kind of like hit that certain feel, especially us being like Asian American. So you're kind of like, because mm -hmm. there's like, I'm not giving anything away, but there's a scene where they go to church because they're Asian. They go to church. And then after church, there was like a, I don't know, like a party where they have punch and pie. Because I think in my review, I was like, I went to Catholic school and we never had like punch and pie afterwards. I was like, but it's, I'm also thinking like, this is like southern churches so they probably are like everything's a fucking barbecue or whatever i don't know i never lived in the south but the so the the, the 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 in the family of course it's like the family of course it's like mom dad of course there's grandma there's always the elderly and then a son and a daughter there's always a grandma yeah she's a thousand years old yes <laughs> yeah and so they're at the the after church party which that sounds weird and it's like <laughs> so i think it was the girl no or the boy one of them 
another kid their age walks up to them and goes, hey, tell me if I'm saying an Asian word and just starts saying gibberish. Bro, trigger the fuck out of me. I had to like, uh, this, the movie was still playing. I had to get up and like pace around my tiny little room while that scene was happening. Cause I was like, I literally was like, all right. So, uh-huh. I'm like watching it like here, like this. I'm like, uh-huh. me like watching it so, like having to like get up and just kind of like okay is this scene over yet you know or or like something like like, like something that's very relatable to to uh, to, to us <laughs> it's still it's like one of those things where like a little triggering but it's still very worth watching because again it's like the immigrant it's the immigrant story but it's like it's asian immigrants you know mm -hmm. um and, and also like steve Young does like a great job because he's a great actor, you know. Um, so there's that. <laughs> the next is Nomadland, which directed by Chloe Zhao, who got the you know Golden Globe and all that stuff, and then did Eternals. But you know, it's just Marvel didn't understand why she wanted to film outdoors because she wanted outdoor lighting. Thanks, Marvel. Um, because wait, it, that that was an issue. That was a thing because you know every you know Marvel movies are usually filmed in front of the screen or blue screen. Right. And she was like, oh, why don't you just film this outside? And they were like, outside. That's, there is the sun. That, that's also why I kind of enjoyed Eternals a little bit, because I was like, oh, this is actually, I was like, I could, I could tell it was natural lighting they were using <laughs> at, at times. So I was like, this is, uh, oh, this is the sun. This is real light. This is good. This, that's not a, not a box overhead. But yeah. Um, of course, I'm the one who always complains about lighting, Jesus. Christ. Anyway, but the next one, like I said, is Nomad Land. It's the movie about Frances McDormand's character, who is a is a nomad. You know, like like she doesn't really have like a set place to live. She lives out like an uh a van RV thing. Um, is it just a van or an RV? Yeah, it's a it's a van. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a white van. She lives out. It's I'm like it's been almost a year since I saw the movie, so I'm like. Yeah. Um, she lives out of that, and the movie feels a little bit more like a documentary than a movie, um, because you follow Frances McDormand's character, and you know she she does all these odd jobs. So she'll work at like an Amazon fulfillment center. She'll work at like a like a pub kind of pub restaurant bar thing, you know. But then she just drives around and all that stuff. And the part that feels more like a documentary is when she goes to these like you know. Um, I guess you would say RV camps or something. RV camps and stuff. And this part in the movie, these are real people. Like, they didn't just hire, like, elderly people. They they, they actually met actual, like, people, like older people, like Francis McDormand, who that's how they live. Like, they live out of vehicles, either because economically that's the only thing they can do, or I'm retired, well, what else am I going to do? I can't really travel the world, but I can travel the U.S., you know, that kind of stuff. And that part felt so, like, what's the word? So personal, because these people aren't actors. So when they were telling stories or something, and you know how, like, you know how, like, dialogue in a movie where you're supposed to, like, speak over someone? It's still dialogue in a movie, the way how someone speaks over someone, you know? But naturally, when people are talking and they speak over someone, you know, it's it, it's obviously different, you know? And so those scenes when they're, like, telling stories and someone kind of speak over someone, and it really just... Like I said, it was more documentary on that part because it was amazing to see these people who actually live like this kind of like talk about living that way. And I think even one of the people at the end, because um, I was reading like, you know, IMDB information, all that stuff. Um, they These people actually thought that they were filming a documentary because um, one person like when they found out they were like they didn't know Francis McDormand is a is an actress you know i mean like sh like to me because i'm a i love her so like i was like how do you not know she was in fargo and she's like i can like name her movies you know like her husband's one of the cohen brothers what do you mean they fought you know but i'm that person um they didn't even know she was an actress they thought she was also literally one of them so like at the end of the movie they were like no we weren't filming a documentary we're filming like a movie movie they were just like blown away they were like, holy shit, we're going to be in an, a, like a dead ass movie, <laughs> you know? And like, yes, you're going to be in a fucking Golden Globe winning movie, you know? Like, fuck yeah. Um, from a Golden Globe winning director who got the marble check, you know? And it's it's a very like, 
I don't, uh, I feel like saying slice of life movie sounds kind of like, for me sounds dumb because saying slice of life just be like, you just follow someone going to the office and then they come home and then they hate their wives. You know, because <laughs> uh, this was like, it's like you, you went with her and like her, like when she would like drive around and like visit her family and some of them are like, when are you going to settle down and not drive around? Da, da, da. You know, because it will be like her kids or something. It would be like, sometimes they'll be like, you're always welcome. And then other people are like, you're never welcome because they like, it's like the mentality of people who can't trust someone who won't settle down in so many, and it, mm -hmm. that kind of works in so many aspects of life, you know, mm -hmm. especially, I feel like, especially this is like a bigger thing because she's a woman too, you know? Mm. And so it's like, it's so amazing to see her. Like she's doing her thing. She's able to work, get her money, travel around, meet all these amazing people. Like she, she's, she's doing well, you know? And I get that people want her to just be like, here, just be the lady having your home and just meeting the grandchildren, but she's not that kind of person. But I think this is on Hulu as well. Um, okay. But yeah, if you're able to like see it, I would say definitely. Also, because it's Chloe Zhao and she knows how to uh, direct, um, yes, it's all filmed outside, so it's all natural lighting. And it's and it's all in like the Pacific, like this region here. Like, 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 like a... Like a North West? Not northwest, but like kind of lower, slightly lower than Yos Yosemite kind of thing. Where it's like kind of Arizona y, you know, where like you'll see some cactus oh. and there's a lot of mountain plateau shit happening. So you know the sky is gorgeous wherever they're filming, you know? So just like the West. Per yes, pretty much. Not California West, but just. It's so funny to be like, West, California. No, 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 not that West. It's too South, West. Yeah. Southwest. Yeah, yeah, Southwest. Southwest. Yeah, that's, that's it. Southwest. Yeah. I'm like gesturing to the map, like in this region, you know, where it's a lot of sand and people. So, Dune. Yes, Dune. <laughs> then people will get angry about it, you know? Um, yeah, so, after this one is Bo Burnham's Inside. I fucking love it. I fucking love it to death. I love the songs he did. I like still listen to the, like I love listening to the songs. Um mm -hmm. I I love how he was able to like make fun of mental illness but like not in a bad way. You know, like make it fun. Like it's weird. Right. It sounds terrible to say he made mental illness fun, but he wasn't like glorifying it, you know? He was just kind of like he was just kind of like, I feel like shit. Like, even in his song about turning 30, he's like, and tw he's like, 20, 30, I'll be 40 and I'll kill myself then. And it's like, oh, I, but at the same time, bitch, I know exactly how that feels, you know? Like, well, I, I found it funny mm -hmm. that a lot of people are just like, yeah, this, this is, he's a comedian. This is supposed to be funny. And then, like, you'll hear the songs on Instagram because for a while it was nothing but clips of him um on instagram or his songs like for because of the whole um algorithm and things like that right but you actually watch it and yeah he's making fun of mental illness but he's really being very honest about how he's feeling mm -hmm. like that moment when he starts to laugh during one of the songs and it's just a little depraved it's just like oh quarantine was not good to you this isn't acting well yeah also like i never knew he can grow a beard because he always has baby face you know, I almost forgot what, because seeing him as that Bo Burnham, I almost forgot what he looked like until someone on Tumblr or something reblogged. Um, he was, he was in the movie, um, Promising Young Woman. And I was like, oh my oh. God, I forgot Bo Burnham is like the tall twink with the blonde hair with the baby face. Like I almost forgot. And he's not the like long haired bearded dude. Like I almost forgot that's the Bo Burnham I know. And I almost forgot that's what he looked like, like normally, you know. Um, and yes, you were. This is a very different man, right? One of these man has a British accent. <laughs> One of them has a British accent. I know that. Just the squeakiest voice, and for some reason, it's full on Cockney. Hey, Dad, would you have to sweep my chimney? I am. I am. Like the worst fucking accent you could think of just put it on full blast and he's dressed as like a high school like like private school boy in, yeah. uh, and also has like a cricket stick that he's just kind of flailing he does have that like prep school look to him yes he does yeah but like once he opens his, he did, 
Yeah, but once he opens his mouth, you're like, oh, you're an actual, like, three-dimensional person, yes. Yes. And then you saw, in like, um, not Inside Out, that's a different thing. Uh -huh. But once you see, like, Inside, it's just like, oh, you are very flawed. And that's okay. And it's... That's why he's it's so funny. good at his shit, yeah. It's funny and very dark. And it's just like, We've all been there. This is really good. I'm not laughing at the end, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. What got me, like, it's not about the, his his thing at all. It's, it's like, how some people reacted to it. I mean, not that I took it personally, but, like, just because the, because this is technically a comedy special, but, it, yeah, obviously mm -hmm. it got real, but I kind of, like, took his, the whole performance, the whole thing personal, like, you know, because obviously I could relate to it. You know, and for people to be like, it's not as great as you think it is. He's just sad and and horny, and I'm like, that's what you got out of it was that he's just sad and horny. <laughs> like that's you want to just surface level but on top of surface level, like oh he's just sad and horny. Okay, what's gonna solve it? Some pussy? Like oh whoop de fucking do. Like you know, like you missed the whole thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> like Jesus. Like, it was very well written. I wonder what order he actually recorded things. Oh, it right. It doesn't seem like he recorded everything in order. Right. It, like, like, oh, I guess I'll do this one, and then I'll do this one, and I don't know, like, I mean, yeah, I think his, his hair and beard growth were about the same throughout the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know, but I, I think he did amazingly, you know, with, like, the, the time things with, like, the lights when he was stepping on it, or, like, the projection mm -hmm. stuff on the wall and all that stuff. I thought that was great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I liked it a lot, so I don't give a shit what other people think. Um, then the last one on this list is Judas and the Black Messiah. I mean, like, did I say more story about the Black Panthers? <laughs> like, you know, it was like, it was that. Yeah. That's another film I wanted to watch, but because of things going on, I didn't get to see it. Johnson got to see it. Yeah. Of course, the the cast I knew is stellar. Oh. I'll let you talk about it instead of being like, here's this film I never saw. Let me tell you about my experience. <laughs> I've never seen... I mean, that's how most people talk about movies these days. <laughs> I'm just gonna be... We had a very long, partially muted discussion about Dune. <laughs> about how people watch Dune, you know? Anyway. um, Yeah, like, Daniel Kalu Kaluuya... There I go being that person who can't pronounce black people's name. He did very well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He did win the Golden Globe and all that stuff. Like, he did amazingly on it. But we all knew he's a great actor, because fuck it, I've seen mm -hmm. his work. He, he did amazingly. And what I learned that, like, he went to an opera coach for that movie. Because he has to, like, stand there and project his voice when he's speaking because he has to, like, speak to the people. And he had to learn how to, like, get that out. And that, when I heard that, I was like, that makes total sense. That makes total sense. Because mm -hmm. it's a different, like, it's a different stance. It's a different breathing thing. You have to, like, you know, and then the way how you, you know, project your voice. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. I told, I'm like, yes. And it's, 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 it's done well. It shot so well. I wonder if I still have it. There's one shot in the movie that I, like, I literally had to take a screenshot of it because I, I, it was, like, just so, so pretty that I had to take a shot of it. Where is it? God, I saw this movie, like, forever ago, so I'm like, 40,000 screenshots later? Yeah, like, again, it's the story of uh, Fred Hampton and the Black Panthers and all that stuff, and, like, like do I have to explain <laughs> you know the Black Panthers you know those guys I think they did alright like it's anything coming out of my mouth about the Black Panthers just makes me sound so dumb I'll just say it was good <laughs> cause anything out of my mouth is just gonna sound so fucking dumb I think they did pretty good you know those guys what the government did to them wasn't great like anything out of my mouth I'm not gonna help anyone anyway come on turn but just this shot. Ooh. It's like the green with the orange and the silhouette. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's also that also feels very Roger Deakins to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, that's also why I'm like, Ugh. I saw that shot and I was like, pause, screenshot. Just because I was like, holy shit. Yeah. 
Like, it's mm -hmm. shot beautiful. It's amazing. And, you know, obviously it's based on a real person and real people and all that shit. And it's just like... Like, it's one of those mm -hmm. movies where, like, it's so good. It's like, I just... Me talking about it just sounds dumb. Like, it's black people! <laughs> like, it's like... It's like... Oh no, Joe, everything you're saying. <laughs> Ever right. You're a good person. Right? Exactly. It just nothing comes out right. Be like, it's they struggled and they did their best. <laughs> like, it's like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm just standing next to a relative talking, like, I don't know, at like a pride event and I'm just watching them fail and I'm just like, no. You know the no, homo no. sex? The homo sex is okay. You know, it's a little weird. Don't tell me about it, but it's the homo sex. What? There's another kind? Oh, what is that kind? You know, like they learn about like either yep. genders or like, like mm -hmm. others. They're like, what is that about? Oh, that's just really. Oh, I'm just, I'm learning so much. Oh, this is just not right. You know, like it always like it goes down to like a whisper. Oh, this is just not. Right. You know, like, then, then I start having like a partial existential crisis. Like, give off that vibe. Oh my. Well, I mean, just put on a hockey mask, and then suddenly Wait. you are that thirteen year. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> You're a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> you just kicked someone for their money and you had a hockey stick. <laughs> I just put a <laughs> That's great. Oh, God, this is covered in dust. Woo! That's old, that's old Billy Joe. He's been in the third grade for five years. The last category, it's kids. Um, it's Mitchell versus the Machines and Luca. Yeah. Did you watch any of them? Mitchell, yes. Luca, no. All right. So, yeah, Mitchell versus Machines was great because it's like it's an animated family movie, but like not that they put adult jokes in there, but it wasn't like it's for kids. Like, you know, when you watch a kids movie and you're like, Jesus Christ, like kids aren't even this dumb. Like you know, when you watch like kids stuff, you're like. God, how dumb do you think children are? My God, you know? Dust everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked it. I, I really loved that one kid who kept calling people. was like, I want to talk about dinosaurs. And they'd hang up on him. I'm like, oh my God, I'm that kid. I mean, I didn't call random numbers and wanted to talk about freaking Ninja Turtles or anything. But, like, I, I totally... I'm totally that kid. Like, you don't want to talk about... It's like... It's like totally summarized, like, why... I do like movie reviews on YouTube because it's like I had no one to talk to about movies, and I was like, "Do you want to talk about?" No, you don't like watching movies. You think horror films are the dumbest things you've ever watched? <laughs> you know, it's like it's, I want to talk about dinosaurs. No, I want to talk about that. Like that kid, I was like, "That's my child right there." I see myself in that child. You know, I love that movie. It's been a while since I watched it, so I'm kind of like. <laughs> like with it, but mm -hmm. what did you like? What did you think of the movie? I I loved it. I thought that all the characters made sense. Um, all their different flaws made sense. Right. I really liked the father character who just did not get tech, but could give a build a beautiful house mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, yeah, I just liked the family dynamic overall, and I liked, even though it was a simple like the villain is the robots. Okay, we get it. Right. But it was still, as much as it was silly, it didn't feel like this was a pointless challenge. It's just like, oh, the entire world is out to get them. And even the things in there that were thrown in that were clearly meant for our generation. Because what 10-year-old knows what a Furby is? Yes. The evil Furbies that showed up, yes. Yes. <laughs> like... Anyway, about the, the Mitchells and the Machines. So odd, I'm listening. It was, it was funny and very quick-witted without being, as you said, stupid. Right. Which... It wasn't a children's movie, you know? Because it's like, watching stuff that came out when we were kids, you're like, you understand more of the jokes. Like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. the stuff that as a kid you understood. And then sometimes you're like, oh shit, this is stuff. Like, oh my god, like rewatching Ren and Stimpy and you're like, 
god, I get so... This is, like, really sexual, and I didn't even realize it. Holy fuck. I mean, also, that does explain my humor, because I say, the, like, some fucked up shit, some fucked up sexual shit, and it's like, Ren and Stimpy. It's, like, it's a I'll god damn Ren and like, Stimpy. I'll, huh? I'll say things that I don't realize are, like, sexual or as harsh as they are, and then someone will be behind me and start screaming. And then, and then, and then, and then Paul and I are on the floor, and then you go, "Oh no, what did I say?" And then Johnson goes, "You did it again." <laughs> <laughs> this is machines was great. Luca, I really liked because it was like, "Oh, a Disney movie with gay subtext." <laughs> yes, it was yes, a. It, it, made, it made my that. eye pee a little because of the gay subtext. I'm sorry. I once heard someone say I made their IP, so now I have to start saying that just because it's such a. First of all, it's an image. Second of all, it, it's great. It's a good thing to say to weed out the people <laughs> who are like, no, <laughs> you know, like the whole thing about like when water touches you, you you're, you're like a fish kind of stuff, and then you have to hide it from people. You have to hide your true self mm. from people. And anytime he's near water, which is hard because the the thing is a by the seashore kind of shit and he's got to like hide himself and all that stuff and it's it's very much like a and, and it's and i'm like watching it being like oh my babies my babies like i'm watching these characters like my babies these are my babies yeah and you know me i don't go look at children and go my baby i go fucking children <laughs> you know i see dogs and i go oh look at the babies you know but i look at children i'm like uh oh, they're there Hey, <laughs> like, but this one I was like, my babies, or like it was really cute. Like the 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 story itself, you know, very cute. Da da da. But then you if you like with the like the gay subtext in it, you're also like, oh, my babies, <laughs> just because they're like, it's just very much like a oh, my babies, you know, like very one like to protect them, be like it's okay. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready, that's when you'll tell everyone <laughs> like that kind of stuff. So you, I'm, I'm gathering that you felt that Luca was way more gay. It was also more obvious, like way more mm. obvious with with the gay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to watch it and feel really upset and protective. <laughs> it was mainly because of the whole thing with like the the fact that he he's actually a fish person that could transform into a human. And then mm -hmm. he has to like hide who he is, you know that whole thing. And it's like, it's it's it definitely has like a like a like an X Men kind of thing to it, where it's like we can't tell anyone, <laughs> you know. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I feel like because things are a little bit more open nowadays, that like I was kind of a little bit surprised that there was kind of like a gay subtext in it, just because like nowadays people like whether for good or bad, like they you know. Like, when they do write gay queer characters or something like that, it's either, like, someone's like, gay! And it's like, I get it! You know, that kind of stuff. Or they try to do, the thing I always complain is, like, the checklist thing of, like, oh, we have a, a gay character, a lesbian oh, oh, a trans character. Guys, we got one! You know, like, where they try to, like, checklist it and be, like, super woke by being like, look at our diverse cast of white people! You know? <laughs> like... <laughs> But they're queer. It's different. Why do you hate my movie or whatever? You know, like it's that kind of thing. Where like, so a movie that's being a little bit subtle about it, but but without being like, um, mean or you know, what I mean, like they're like they did it like kindly, you know. And it's Disney, so for it to be like, oh, 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 you know, like that, it's like, oh, that's how I felt watching the movie. You know, yeah. Okay, that's actually a really good review of it. I've, of course, I've been on the internet, so I've had some people say like, "Oh, it, it you know, saying like, <coughs> oh, it's gay," but it's just like, yeah, I've heard a lot from the internet. Yeah, let's just because it's yeah. like it's it's definitely again, it's definitely subtle where middle America is not going to be able to tell that kind of stuff because it's mm -hmm. still Disney, you know. So it's right. subtle enough where, a a straight is not really a straight who doesn't know a gay would not be able to see that. But mm -hmm. us queers are like, hi, you know, we'll be like me, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, 
let's let's go over the honorable mentions because I think my thing is about to die. Okay, I I just have one in honorable mentions. Okay, it's a movie called Psycho Gorman. Um, oh yeah, it's it's like what the fuck is that movie? Uh, I found it on Shudder, which is a, a horror movie streaming service that I use, and it's not really yeah. it's not really that kind of horror. It's goofy as fuck. Now, what makes this movie amazing is that it's all practical effects. You know, all practical. So there's a dude in a suit. And it's, like, in a suit, and he's, like, this alien thing, and there's alien shit going on. But, like, everyone takes it in stride. So, like, this alien shows up, and these little kids are like, hey, come play with us! And it's just like, what? And it's, like, a big, like, and he's, like, purple, and, like, fucked, like, like kind of, like, not fucked up looking, but scary looking. Like, he, there's no way you look at that as a child and don't think, holy fuck, you know? I mean, we probably, I mean, we grew up on like Power Rangers, so probably all right, you know, and also Godzilla movie. It, so it would also be us. It'd be like yeah, that's that's, that's different. I'd be I yeah. We're we're in the school of Guillermo del Toro, which is monster love, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like anyway, so it's like big scary monster thing and monster stuff, and then these kids are like, come on and play with us, da da da. And there's like this like scene where. Like, the, there's a young girl who is like, oh, blah, 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 I got you a magazine or something. And the thing picks up a magazine, and there's, like, an ad where it's, like, kind of a slightly thicker man in jeans. He's like, like, I have to look at this. Like, the alien's literally speaking in English. He's like, oh, do I need, look, I need a husky boy? Maybe. Then his eyes glow a little, and I was like... First of all, is this alien me talking about Husky Boy? Second of all, what? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like so silly. Like, what the fuck? And then, like, the, the alien guy, like, the alien dude is, like, totally fine with the kids. And there's, like, a scene where literally, like, the alien guy is walking. And the little girl is, like, in front of it, like, doing, like, this. And, to, like, and it's, like, slightly in slow motion. So she's, like, like, doing that. And he's, like, behind her, like. Like, and there's one part where he has, he puts on human clothes and he's in like a light blue button up shirt with a straw hat and khakis, <laughs> you know, it's so fucking silly, but I fucking love it. And like, I gave it three and a half stars. Like the only reason like why I didn't give it higher marks was that like, there really wasn't much of a story to it. Like not much of a plot. It was just like, let's just put this alien, a goofy kind of situation and things happen these kids like are totally fine with this alien thing and then there you go glowy eyes do the you know all that stuff but if you're able like um if you're able to freaking check out this movie i would say check it out because it's like it's silly but it's like fun but like and, and not a dumb like way you know and just to see like an alien pull up a magazine with like a picture of a shirtless man in jeans and just being like am i interested in boys like <laughs> and I was like, like, this alien is me. <laughs> like, you know, like, but yeah, yeah. So th that's my honorable mention where I was just like, it's not on the super top, but it's definitely one that I'm like, people have to watch this. You know? Yeah. I like that that was the reaction. Not that I need jeans, but the entire man is the thing being yeah. advertised. Yeah, because it's a shirtless guy, blue jeans, and you know the thing with like a little line of like boxer shorts or something. You just you see a little bit of the underwear. Mm -hmm. It's just like an ad, you know, where it's like a like a like a blue gray background kind of thing. It's like something something husky man, and it was just like the way how he just like picked up the magazine and just looked at it, and he's like, and he like lifts his eye, like, do I? And his eyes gl like glow for a second. You're like. You, what was that? <laughs> like you're like, what was that? <laughs> it's like it, and it, everything is practical effects. So it's a guy in a suit, and any like other weird thing is like a fucking you know like thing, like an actual thing in front of them. So they didn't have to like hold up like a like a like a golf ball on a stick. Yeah, you know, I mean golf ball. No one's gonna see it. A tennis ball on a stick, and it's like, look at this. Pretend it's an alien. You know that kind of stuff. So. I, I enjoyed that, mainly just because, again, the practical effects just won me over immediately, you know? Yeah. That was good And shit. the humor, it seems, because it's just... It's it's good. It's it's silly. And again, it's like, it's like the little girl would just be like, hey! And it's just like sitting there, like, in the garage, like, on a couch, like... Bleh. And she's like, I got you stuff! And it's just like, what is... Go like, you're watching a movie and you're literally going, what is going on? Guys, I feel silly. like that's our friendship. Like anyone looking at any of us, we're just mm -hmm. like, 
w- what happened? Yeah. What? Why is the angel of death following like this person who has a lightsaber, and then there's regular Paul? <laughs> right. So he's not Hellboy. He's just Paul. Yeah. <laughs> there's a grizzly bear following them mm-hmm. too. Like, what is going on? And then Johnson. He's the regular person. He's more of the regular I person. Guess... Yeah. You want to plug in your thing, or do you want to do this? Uh, the 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 worst list on a different day. Let's do the worst list on a on a different day because okay. I also want to pack up a little bit. So no, that's okay. It's also almost two a.m. over here. Like you know, I'm always good to right. go for however long. But yeah, that that's totally fine. Plus, I'll, yeah, it's all good.